Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mark Loeffler Experience. Uh, we got a great show here for you today. We're gonna be talking presidential elections. We're gonna talk about vaccines. Um, yeah, and we're gonna talk about what that means for our real estate and for our economy. Yet, first off, I have to say thank you. Uh, you might have noticed something different when you clicked on um, the video this time. Yeah, we have ads. So we are monetized now. It is November 9th, Monday, November 9th, and we're monetized. So we're gonna have a little celebration. Uh, if you want to see, I, I promise this if we hit a thousand subscribers by the end of July, but now that we're monetized and you know, you guys are all subscribing and coming on, go to my Insta Instagram and I'm going to do some Russian dancing over there for you. So you guys want to check that out. Uh, live in the dream 40. We're going to put the link. We're going to put it right here. Um, and you guys can check that out. So thanks everybody if you've recently subscribed to the channel keep smashing that like button for the youtube algorithm it's working we do appreciate it and you know if you know anybody that you think this video could help please share it with them uh either directly social media whatsapp whatever it looks like i do appreciate it guys all right so let's talk about this so it appears that donald trump is going to be out of the white house whether you're a donald trump fan or a joe biden fan this is not what I'm here to discuss. You know, it's not what happens to you. It's what you do about it. So we have Joe Biden. This is, this is a foregone conclusion. It's happening. Joe Biden's in. Um, so what does that mean for us as Canadians, as real estate investors, as investors in general? So, well, I mean, it means a couple of things. He can't really push through the, um, the, the tax raises that he wants because they don't control all three houses and the Republicans in the Senate will never push through those tax changes. So I'm not, I mean, that's for the U S guys that has not, no bearing on us in Canada. We obviously we pay a lot of taxes in Canada. So real estate, what does that look like? So what's it really going to change? So number one, um, we had a bit of a fractitious, um, relationship with Donald Trump in the trade world. So do we think that trade is going to get easier? I mean, let's be honest, Democrats and Canada typically have a good working relationship. So that means we're probably going to see more trade. So more manufactured goods, um, which means more jobs, more agricultural goods, which again, jobs. Um, one of the things is obviously Joe Biden has talked about, um, being zero oil. So what does that mean? Well, unfortunately we ship all of our oil and a lot of our gas products and that down South, um, because either we don't have refining capacity here or the refining capacity we do have, uh, we get oil from you know, shipped in. And so unfortunately that could be, that could be an issue. You know, we have something like Enbridge building, um, pipelines. So that might take a hit. So again, we're looking at Alberta, Saskatchewan, that might be a hit, uh, to their economy. It might, you know, bring down some jobs, whether you're, whether, whether you think where the direction of oil is going, I, I don't know that it's going to be that much of it. They're not going to, I don't think it's going to kill them at this point, in my opinion. Now that the Democrats are in, I mean, we just announced and we just had a video on this. We'll link it below about the uh, 1.2 million um, immigrants coming to Canada in the next couple of years. So if Donald Trump was in, then let's be honest, the United States might not have been the place people chose to go if they were immigrating they might have said oh you know canada may be a little safer might be a little you know we choose canada over the u.s at this point so with the democrats in you know if you're a, coming from another liberal com country you might choose to say okay um we we'd like to immigrate to the u.s uh instead of canada uh obviously for many reasons jobs um Whatever, whatever it is, they're, they're, they're just bigger and they have more opportunity down there, 100%. So that might affect some of the people who we do get in 
for immigration. So what does all this mean for us as real estate investors? Let's, let's just have a little fireside chat here. At the end of the day, I don't see that any of their policies or any of their uh, what they're going to do is going to have a long term impact on what we do in Canada. I think obviously, you know, some maybe out west a little bit, you know, there's going to be some increase in jobs. Maybe I, I don't know. Like these are all long term things. Nobody's going to say, oh, I'm going to put a factory in Canada because now Democrats are in power and we're not going to have an issue. Who knows? At the end of the day, yet I think obviously Canadian real estate is still a great investment. I'm still putting my money into it right now. So let's talk. So that's that's just Joe Biden. That's who won the U.S. election. We get it. Some people are happy. Some people aren't. Um, it is what it is. So I think the bigger news is probably uh, Pfizer releasing the results from their phase three clinical trials, which were 90 plus percent effective in a vaccine against um, COVID uh, or coronavirus or whatever we want to call it. I mean, what does that mean for us as real estate investors? What does that mean for investors in general? So number one is, I mean, I don't know if you're on the stock market today, but I had loaded up on a bunch of like Suncor, Enbridge, uh, some US bank stocks, some basically things that are reopening. So I'd loaded up on those. So I'm having a very good day on the market, everyone. So first off, I got monetized. Plus my account's up around 11%, um, which is nice. I mean, Suncor itself is up just is up a little over 20% today, um, which is accounting for, I'd say, I don't know, 70% of my gains today, which is, I mean, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, if you're a money magnet like me, just let me know down below. Uh, anyways, sorry, we were having a conversation about Harvecker earlier. Number one, it means that People are going to get the vaccine or not. I'm not, I'm not here to debate that. It, what it means is more people are likely to travel. So more people are going to take airlines. Uh, more people are going to go on cruise lines. Cruise lines are going to open up again. And that means the demand for oil and for gas will go up. So therefore, oil prices are going to go up. More people are going to travel because more people are going to go back to the office. I know that a lot of companies announced that they're not going to have people come back to the office yet. A lot of people will. Um, so looking forward six months, the fact that is that oil demand is going to go back up. We're not all driving electric cars right now, electric uh, buses, electric um, jets, boats, whatever. Like we're, we're not doing that yet. So demand for oil is going to go up and, and we're already starting. I mean, people are guessing that cruise lines are up. Um, I mean, Boeing stock is up huge today. All the airlines are up huge today. So again, what does that mean for us as real estate investors? That means that when I did that uh, condo video, uh, condo market crash, could that mean that when we talked to Alex that it was gonna be 2022? Could that mean that that might start coming back in say June of 2021 through the summer of 2021? I don't know if I said it on YouTube, I told a lot of people this. I felt that June 2021 was kind of like the end date for all of this. Um, I think I said it on YouTube. I'll have to go back and look. Uh, but we'll link the condo video down here if you want to check that out as well, because I think there's some opportunity there. Uh, and, and just that I think that there's going to be opportunity. Now, with saying that is if it does come out that quick, it's, it, this is a tricky thing. I think they might raise interest rates a little bit. Uh, just seeing that when that does happen, you're going to see a big boom in GDP and you're going to kind of, they're going to be pressured to raise interest rates. It's going to be hard for them because they took on so much debt uh, during this period that I think maybe they're going to let inflation go a little higher. I don't know. I'm not obviously a policymaker. Yet I think that we could see inflation of three to three and a half percent. A lot of people, I mean, I don't know, we had Andrew Hines on here earlier and he thinks it's going to go much higher than that just because of the debt levels and, um, you know, the low interest rates and what they're doing to create money. Anyways, guys, I don't know. So Joe Biden, uh, vaccines, monetization on a Monday. What, what more fun could we have? I don't know. I, I don't really watch the news all that often. I don't listen to the news all that often. Yet when a stock I own is up 20%, I got to go check out what's going on. 
And that's big news. Whether you're getting the, the vaccine or not, whatever fan or not, at the end of the day, if people are more confident, they're going to go back to work. They're going to go out to restaurants. They're going to spend more money. They're going to travel. Um, so everything we haven't been doing in the last, I don't know, eight months, people are going to start doing again. I'm going to do a great video next week. I, I feel it's going to be great. I'm going to go sit down with a um, one of my partners and he opened a restaurant during this time in the pandemic and it's been open for about a month. So we're going to sit down with him and we're going to talk about how that's going right now. Uh, let me know, comment down below if you have any questions that I should be asking Corey during that time, if you're a business owner, uh, if, what risks and that type of thing. So just comment down below what questions you want me to ask Corey. All right, everyone, thanks so much again. Uh, I appreciate it. Please watch all the, the uh, ads all the way through. I'm going to do a video on that uh, coming up. Uh, pro the end of November, I'm going to say, oh, from November 9th to this date, this is how much money I made. I'll share with you how much I have invested in the YouTube channel so far so we can see Mark's return on investment. Also, how much time I have involved in it as well so you can see a return on time. Anyways, guys, thanks, thanks so much, everyone. Happy Monday. We'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.